What is good, folks? It's All Things Country here. And today I've got something a little bit different. I visited my local metal shop uh, over the weekend. One of my favorite things to do, pick through their scrap bin. And for 25, 30 bucks, I got a bunch of good stuff and we're going to make some prospecting equipment. Not the least of which being a black sand separating magnet. But just to show you what you can get for your money, if you're careful, these are 18 inch uh, square, square aluminum rods. Those are going to be used to make uh, legs for my dream mat sluice. But uh, that's a project for another day. This is a, uh, some aluminum tubing, two inch, that I pulled out of the scrap. And today we're going to make a, uh, a suction tip for my gold pump. So I'll show you how that works later. But the most important thing we're going to make today is a black sand separator magnet. Now I have this one that I use for painter. Uh, it's made from wooden dowel and two neodymium magnets with a flathead screw. We're going to make something similar, but I wanted something that's better for the field. I wanted something that I could use in the outdoor that it's a little robust. And I mean, these things work great. There's, I keep my black sand, and you can see how, how great that works right through the jar. Awesome stuff. We're going to make one that's a little bit more powerful. We have uh, two neodymium magnets here, 32 millimeters. This is a cap off of uh, some laundry detergent, but you can use anything that'll fit your neodymium magnet. And we have a washer. And most importantly, I got this awesome piece of aluminum rod out of their scrap. And this is going to be the, uh, the handle for my magnet. Very durable, very lightweight. So let's go ahead and get started making our magnet. Here are some of the black sand magnetic removal tools that you can find on uh, many prospecting websites that sell equipment. To me, none of them really, really work all that well. You have the ones that float around in your gold pen that end up sucking up your gold with your magnetics. You've got the, uh, the cheap ones with the springs in them. You've got uh, the, the little pen type. I've tried them all and never been satisfied, so I always end up making my own. Today, we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, well, the first thing we want to do is to create our cap that's going to go on the end of the magnet. I'll show you how it all works later, but we want to take some sandpaper. This is 100 grit. Rougher the better. We're going to rough this up. So the adhesive we're going to use to stick this in the cap is JB Weld because it is waterproof. So now that we've roughed up our washer a little, we'll rough up the inside of the cap. And that's just going to help the adhesive work and give it something to grab onto and hold whenever the magnet's in use. And we're going to use JB Weld, the marine weld, because it's waterproof. And like I said, I want this magnet to be something that stands up in the field. So let's go ahead and we're going to mix up our JB Weld next. All right, so we went ahead and we mixed. It's half hardener and half adhesive. You mix it together so it forms this kind of a dark gray color. We're going to use our Q-tip here to scoop some of this up. And we're going to apply that to the rough side of our washer here. Don't worry about being generous. This stuff hardens. Uh, it, it's actually rock hard when it's done. It takes about three, four hours to start setting really, really well. So you can actually use it and put pressure on the parts you're welding or sticking. I guess you're not really welding it. Although sometimes with, with the end result of this stuff, you'd be surprised how durable it is. A little bit difficult to work with. I've got a, uh, a Q-tip here. If I had to do this again, I would probably put select something more robust like a popsicle stick or something like that. But this will get the job done. All right, so that's more than enough on our washer here. There's a quick view of that. And all we're going to do is we're going to flip that into our cap carefully. Push it down and center it. And what I like to do, uh, if you dry this stuff under pressure, it becomes a lot stronger. It's like, you know, how you would put weight on a table. If you're trying to glue two things together. Take your magnet, one of your neodymium magnets, put it on the outside of the cap. And what's going to happen is the pressure from that magnet is going to pull on your washer against that JB weld, and it's going to dry it perfectly in place. So we will leave that. That's going to take about three hours to set. We'll just put that aside. Now, the next thing we need to do, the rod's a little bit longer than what I would like, and there's no need to carry that extra weight around. And it's actually kind of would be awkward to use if the handle was this long. So I want it to be about four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and measure. We cut it right there at four inches. We'll get that out to the shop, and I'm going to put this on the chop saw. But we're also going to uh, be drilling a hole while we're out there. So I'll show you how we do that next. 
So we've got our flathead wood screw here. That's what you have to use. Either that or you have to dr actually drill and tap your, uh, your rod. But we're going to keep it simple because not everyone has a, a tap set at home. This is a number 10 uh, wood screw, zinc plated steel. And you're, you're going to find a bit. I think 1 8 is going to do, do this the best. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what you want to do is you find a bit that's as thick as the shaft of your screw but they, that when you hold it up, you can see the thread sticking out the sides because that's obviously what's going to hold your, uh, your screw with your two magnets into your aluminum rod. So first we're going to cut our rod, just an old scrap blade that I threw on the miter saw and some safety goggles because you're, as you're about to see, safety squint ain't going to do it this time. Now with the miter saw set to a 35 degree angle, we're going to cut our Yabby pump nozzle. Now we use a center punch to punch in a hole in the middle of the uh, rod. This will keep our drill bit from sliding around when we go to drill. All right, we're back from the shop. When you guys saw I cut that awesome nozzle, this is my uh, Yabby pump. And you can see the way it comes, it's just got this small hole right here. Well, not small, it's two inches, but uh, two inch ID here. But it's very hard to get this little tiny bit down in the crack. So that's what this nozzle is for. So very simple, I can carry this in my prospecting pack. And the angle that we cut on there is going to be awesome. To let me get deep down into those crevices where all those awesome juicy nuggets hide. So really happy with how that turned out. Being aluminum, it's nice and lightweight. Like I said, just throw it in the pack and it fits nice and snug in there. So we won't have any suction issues. So I've gone ahead and I've taken my regular pay dirt magnet to, to uh, hold the washer and the cap in place while it's still curing. This will allow me to get these two magnets onto my uh, shaft here. So first I'm going to put a little blue Loctite on this screw, or maybe a lot of blue Loctite. That's fine. The paper towel to catch it. Now this is a little bit tricky. You want to make sure you don't get these magnets. Um, get your finger in between them because these things are bloody powerful. Now I've got to get these two aligned like so. And we can stick our screw right through the, the hole, keeping in mind that screw is going to be magnetic as well. And now I've just got to screw this onto our shaft, which is easier said than done because this is super magnetic. And there we go. Once you find that Robertson hole, give her a few really good tight turns. You might have to loosen it, realign your magnets, and then when they're in place, tighten them back up. And just like that, boom, there's your magnet. So I've got my uh, black sand. I keep my black sand from actual prospecting. I don't keep the pay dirt stuff because when I do pay dirt, I typically review them. I have to pan it all out meticulously at the time. So this is actually from prospecting. I would say this jar weighs probably about three and a half pounds. We've got our magnet here. No doubt this thing is powerful. Not a problem picking that up whatsoever. But I'm going to show you why it's so important to keep your black sands and why having a good magnet for processing is super important. So I've got my little shovel spoon here. I'm going to take out this tiny little bit of black sand, one scoopful, and I put it in my scale tray. Then we're going to head over to the microscope, throw it under, and we'll see how much gold is in that. Remember, one little scoop. So yes, no matter what kind of magnet you use, there's always going to be some ultra-fine gold trapped in that black sand. The best way to get this out of there would be to use the magnet we just made and separate the dirt meticulously while it's dry, leaving only fine dirt behind. I'll get around to that at some point, but 
just look at how much there is in there. And by the way, that silvery looking stuff is actually nickel. So where I prospect is a nickel rich area. Anyways, folks, here's the finished version of our magnet. I think it turned out awesome. And I get the satisfaction of having made something myself instead of just going out and buying it. Did it on the cheap and it's super, super lightweight, durable. And this is going to be awesome out in the field. Thanks all for watching. Cheers. We'll catch you on the next one.